on the windswept prairie during the short twilight hours of winter the air has color a light blue hue of gentle proportion like the smell of tilled dirt and if you like the smell of of harvest when grain is taken off the combine of that that's probably one of the biggest things that drives me to be a farmer a house in the distance appears barren barren barren, barren. ripples along the layers of snow recreate the skin of a great white armadillo plant a crop and you see what you harvest in the fall and hopefully it's rewarding. It's really, really great actually. Glenn Muller owns and operates a large farm near Hazar, Alberta, approximately 120 kilometers east of Calgary. This farm has been in the Muller family for nearly four generations. The Muller family farm has weathered drought, hail, blizzards, and miserably cold winters. We had a couple bouts with grasshoppers that lasted four or five years in a row, which is terrible, where you see hundreds of feet of your field disappear in an afternoon. Over the years, disasters of this kind have become somewhat of a norm in the farming community. But as time goes by, small family farms are facing a new threat, one that is not nearly as visible nor as easy to predict as traditional disasters. Roger Hiller is retiring this year. He has operated Hiller and Sons Farms near the Muller family farm for over three decades. The challenges facing the next generation of family farms are different than before, he says, because they will not be able to compete. The equipment today is so expensive and land prices are going up. Seems like uh, over the last, well, even the last five years, land prices have jumped anywhere from two to $500 an acre. Commodity prices have went up. That's probably a, a big factor to it. Huge returns that we never had before, but with those huge returns, now our, we've got huge expenses. They're following suit. The changing economic and technological structures around farming culture have made traditional family farms obsolete. Corporate farms in Hutterite colonies have an advantage with the smaller margins and are quickly taking over. But where does this leave rural communities and the family farm? One farm a year, in some cases maybe two in some years, gone. So if you do the math from now, from 60 to now, so at one a year, that's about how many farms we've lost. This trend, says Glenn Muller, is disconcerting. It is also very inefficient. Like I said before, our commodities have doubled in price. So now you have outside investors want to invest in farming operations. Lots of times they're getting the original farmer to farm the land where the company has purchased the land from the farmer. They're uh, sitting behind a desk and uh, trying to you know, crunch numbers on how a farm works, but there has to be some hands-on to make it all work, or you will have lots of costly mistakes. This transition from family farm to corporate farm, not only is it detrimental to the farming community, one must also consider the ripple effect on rural towns and villages. Clay Armstrong owns a local automotive shop in Hazar. He also sits on the town council. Yeah, small, not as many farmers out there, but they're farming more land. And they can do that because of the equipment as well. You can cover a lot of acres where years ago you couldn't. Uh, the elevators have changed. Instead of coming into your local elevator, you've got inland terminals. Farming has gotten to be a larger operation. There's not a lot of small family farms anymore, so we've got 
a fraction of the farms in our community that we used to have. Armstrong Automotive in small town Hazar is also a family business. But most of my customers, I would say the large percentage of them, realize that if they don't support me across the board, I won't be here when they need me. Like you saw tonight, people come in after I'm closed. That's not a big deal. They phone me at home, I come down, I do things for them. Although we've lost a lot of population, to a certain extent, the population's still there. It's just a Hutterite colony. And no, they don't support the local communities. I mean, I get very little to no business off Hutterite colonies. Now, the corporate farm isn't going to be a lot different. I don't want to say they're just like a Hutterite colony, but if you've got even a family-run corporate farm, you've only got one family that's going to that store. Even if that one family is still very active, they may have taken the place of three other families. Water in it, fuel, battery, hit the switch, bang. No, we'll just continue on. I mean, if we have an opportunity to expand our size, we will, if it makes good sense. Other than that, we'll just carry on and do what we're doing. It's getting started, it's looking good, had some rain. Just gotta get her all on the ground in good time. The silence speaks. The wind in the page wire fence is a scream born from across the horizon. When this lonely prairie cries its strange language, silence remains unbroken.